Do front offices over or undervalue draft picks? I would say undervalue. I say undervalue too. Oh my god. Overvalue. They overvalue. I say overvalue then. Fuck it. I'm okay. trying to argue. Right. Okay. 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 NBA teams overvalue draft picks for the simple fact that a lot of these front offices suck when it comes to the draft. A lot of niggas don't know how to evaluate draft picks, therefore they overvalue them. You'll see a team like the Jazz. Well, you'll see a trend where a team will end up getting a guy late or got in the second round, therefore they feel, oh man, damn, now I gotta trade five second round picks and get a get a bunch of second round picks because it has actual value. When in reality, it really doesn't. A lot of you don't know how to scout, a lot of you don't have evaluate talent. When you get talent, you don't know how to actually let the talent flourish, develop talent, anything like that. That. It is rare to find. It is a very small amount of teams that actually can um, develop the talent that they do get. Therefore, I would say majority of the teams, teams on average, definitely overvalue draft picks. All you guys are not the Thunder. All you guys are not the Rockets. All you guys are not the Pistons. All you guys are not the Magic. You can't get a bunch of these young, talented guys and actually make them flourish. Who is that? Anywho, <laughs> yeah, that, that 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 is. I, I rest my case. Can't be good. I think the reason why I say that draft picks are getting undervalued because a lot of teams are just giving up their draft picks um, willy nilly, in terms, especially in terms of trade. It's for like championship aspirations. For example, like the Cleveland Cavaliers, the Cleveland Cavaliers gave up like a Yo, lot saying, of um, who is this nerd? their depth as well to <laughs> acquire someone like Donovan Mitchell. Saying, who lot, the fuck like, is this nerd? Yo? Are a really good spot where they have um, picks. They can obviously scout. They can find players that fit within their system, develop them, and eventually trade them. To get bigger pieces as well um so i think when you actually do use it properly especially in today's nba <laughs> do, it's become a lot undervalued is because there's certain teams that i guess overvalue them in a certain way because of a numerical crazy. system and in reality when you treat them like the actual quality of the pick you actually see that it's become a lot more undervalued in today's nba in my opinion I go ahead, in recent buddy. history, what is in, in recent history, what has the Cleveland, Cleveland Cavaliers done with the majority of their draft picks? What are these teams that are giving up their futures to win now? What have they done? What have the Clippers done in the draft to make you say, okay, they shouldn't have given up all those draft picks to form the team they have? What have um what have the Wizards done um to not not the Wizards? Who was it that was it the Rockets that gave a bunch of picks to the Wizards to get John Wall or vice versa? Either way, what has any of those teams done in recent times, well, before they got the picks, to make you say, oh, yeah, them getting a boatload of picks definitely means or definitely shows that they're going to actually develop this talent or do well with this talent. They don't typically do well. A lot You don't see teams that have a good developmental system or teams that actually develop their talent giving up their future. The Boston Celtics, they are very, very shisty with their picks. You don't see them just throwing away a bunch of picks when it comes to getting guys or trying to build these teams. They value their draft picks. The Warriors are the same way. They're not giving away a boatload of draft picks to form all these teams. They might give up one or two, but they're not giving up how the uh, Timberwolves gave up for the Jazz. Who have the Timberwolves drafted in recent memory outside of Anthony Edwards that was worth fucking talking about? Outside of Ant, Ant, between Cat and Ant, who did they draft that was really worth talking about that they kept or re-signed after their rookie uh, extension came up? Um, A team you bring up was LA and OKC, and I actually think that's a fantastic example. LA obviously has not done anything yet. Due to injury, if you want to say it doesn't matter, in the playoffs, they have been eliminated multiple times. Kawhi Leonard has obviously been hurt. PG hasn't shown up. And the OKC has gone a hall of draft picks. And when I mean a hall, I do mean a hall. And they have a young core, a core that which I'm actually very, very high on. One of my hot takes was actually they were going to be a top four seed because of the fact that SGA is at a level where he's at now. And he has the potential to rise. And he's very young. You have guys like Chet, whose his ceiling is actually really, really high. Um, Josh Giddy as well. J the two J-dubs, their core, along with their player development team, has shown when you actually take the time to develop guys, you develop valued players in our league, which eventually could actually turn into multiple draft picks if things go end up do going south. So in my opinion, that's a perfect example of a situation where you you see an opportunity, you take care of it because you had a valued player at the time, and you flip it and you turn it into multitudes of draft picks, valued players, and a very good player development team at which the NBA is actually looking at them as one of the younger, better teams in our league. So I think that example is a pure example of why it's some, uh, the draft picks are actually undervalued in today's league. You're a cook, buddy. I rest my case. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> All right. All right. Um, the poll is in, and Damo wins by landslide. I ain't going to lie. <laughs> Maybe I really got to That's crazy. Oh, you walking out trying to stop? I'm not too familiar with the draft shit. I'm not. That's not me, but it's cool. Ah, uh, so is the top. I am. I'm not. I'm not. The draft is really not my thing, but I appreciate it. You know what I'm saying? It is what it is, man. All right, KB, go ahead. Fuck your shit, man. 
Oh, uh, well, I appreciate you letting me on. You know what I'm saying? At least I made it to the playoffs this time. Oh, um, it is what it is, though. GG's to Damo. Obviously, he's a lot more um, draft-oriented, I guess, is the right word. But, um, yeah, I uh, appreciate you letting me on. It's like My... this? Damn. So what? It's like this. Uh, he's, I guess he's just more draft-oriented. No, he is. I just, I'm literally not, like, familiar with, like, drafts and stuff like that, especially in terms of young guys and picks and, like, I just don't really get into that a lot. He literally talks about it all the time. Like, it's one thing he likes talking about in the NBA. Um, but my socials is KB Knows Ball on literally everything, YouTube, Twitter. It's the main two sources I use. Um, Go Bells is saying unmute me, I think. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. All right. Why was I muted? Because you was yelling in the background, hear- bro. Your mic, your mic, bro. Your mic. Oh. Are you good? I, I'm, I'm confused mm-hmm. right now. KB, go. Go ahead. Okay. Um, but yeah, KB knows ball on everything. I uh, appreciate you, B Souls. I uh, appreciate Cruz for pre- doing what he does in the backstages, you know what I'm saying? Um, but yeah, look, I have a request though. Can I stay for these finals? I'll be on mute. I just want to stay and watch. I'm yeah, yeah, go, go ahead. Go hey, ahead, yes, you may, buddy. Yes, you may. Yes, you may. 